Beloved of God, we thank the Lord my, to Almighty for this time. And I appreciate that you give time to listen. You give time to be part of these sessions during our episodes when they are broadcast and we talk together about God's word. And I want to appreciate God for every opportunity that he has always given us to remain alive in these bodies. Because when we are alive, we live for God because we are his uh, image here on earth. And uh, he gives us assignments to do. He has given me an assignment to do. He has given me an assignment to do. And the assignments that he gives us are all representative, that actually we do what we do. We are meant to be his representatives here. And so we read from his word. We speak from his word. And we pray from his word. We believe in his word. And so I invite you to think through again with me about um, what is very, very common, and this is prophecy. I have already mentioned about prophecy in the past several times because I've spoken about personalities. I've talked about Elijah, I've talked about Elisha, and in every, every, prof every episode that I've spoken, I've defined the prophet, I've spoken about Isaiah, I've defined the prophet, but this little time that we're going to have, let us just interact more about the prophets and read a little bit more from God's word, who the prophets were and who they are. Now, during our, during our time, do we still have prophets? Do they speak what God sends them to do or to speak? Or do they speak their own things? And so in the world where we live, then in the Bible times, and even now, we still have these issues arising about prophecy. And just like I did define, and just like you know, we have talked about a prophet, and a prophet in Hebrew is referred to as Nabi. Nabi, and someone, the word Nabi is about utter, U -double -T -E -R, uttering. Uttering means speaking. And because God is everywhere, he is omnipresent, he is omniscient, but he is spirit. He uses his people to utter his word, to speak his word openly to people that they live among. And so God chooses. And so a spokesman, a spokesperson, someone who is a speaker, speaking out. So Nabi, someone who utters. And so the word Nabi stands out to be the word used for a prophet. The reason why we have, we use it commonly. Muslims use it for their prophet. Now, and even they use it for Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is a Nabi as well. And now, so the word is common. The one who speaks God's word. The one who speaks out the utterances from God. And so during uh, the Bible times, we shall be, uh, we shall gazette ourselves, not scattering ourselves so much, but we shall be basing on some biblical books, some biblical portions that will guide our interaction as we speak about the meaning God is word here in prophets. Now, during the time of prophet Samuel, and so we begin there, during the time of prophet Samuel, there were another word was coined called Roe. Roe, instead of Nabi, Roe. And Roe means seer. And so we introduce another word, seer. And when we read about the story of um, the young man called Saul, who went about, you know, when he had been chosen, his father's donkey got lost. And so he went about looking for it and could not find it. Let me just read First Samuel chapter 9, verse 9. We are introducing the Bible is having another word. Other than prophet, Nabi, here is another one, seer. And in chapter 9, verse 9, they are looking for the donkeys. Saul with his servant. Now, what we are, derived, what we are interested in here with, with is the name seer, the title seer. Look first 
Samuel chapter 9 verse 9 that formerly in Israel when a man went to inquire of God he said come let us go to the seer for today's prophet was formerly called seer and so in verse 10 and Saul said to his servant, Well, well, and Saul said to his servant in verse 10, Well said, Come, let us go. So they went to the city where the man of God was. Listen, now here is the man of God again. Now they went to see a seer, a seer from the word see, the one who sees. So the prophet Nabi, that is one. Another term formerly in Israel, just like I've just read, called seer, someone who sees. And so the donkey was lost. So they were going to look for somebody who could tell them where the donkey could be. And so this Roe, the seer, appears several times in the Bible, referring to Samuel as a seer. The man that could tell, the man that could, you know, lead the people in various, uh, to in the recovery of, like this one, the recovery of the donkey was the work of the seer. So these words referred to Samuel as a seer. And the word prophet, also prominent, referring to men like Nathan. The word Prophet, also prominent, referred to others that we have talked about. But also another seer is called prophet, I mean the seer called God. Look at First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 29. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 29. Let us read it there because these words are being used interchangeably. But you will realize that actually they are very, very prominent in the Bible. 29, 29, the Bible says now the acts of King David, here they refer to King David, now the acts of King David from first to last are written in the chronicles of Samuel the seer and in the chronicles of Nathan the prophet and in the chronicles of God the seer. Now what I'm trying to say dear friends is these two words Prophet and seer are hereby used interchangeably. Yes, Samuel was a prophet, but look, here the Bible is calling him seer. So these people were the guides of society, were the leaders of society in terms of religious matters that were, at, were needed at that time, guiding the people. Go the way, directing people, go the way, and telling the people what was required of them, and even the issues that concerned that were that they concerned them with God, and the issues that concerned them themselves. And so, here, like the donkeys did nothing connecting with maybe godly things, but here, the donkeys, the family was getting worried, and so they needed somebody to speak into their situation. Saul's parents were afraid. And so they needed someone to speak into their situation. The situation of worry, the situation of fear, the situation of, you know, of uncertainty. The seer could reveal to them. And so these were very, very important people in society at that time. Now, what was required was to tell and tell the truth. What was required was to speak and speak exactly what was needed and it was true. And so we had what we call true prophets. And then there would be those that would masquerade as, you know, a masquerading in falsehood. So a true prophet, a true prophet, a true seer was the conveyor of the message from God. What is God saying? So he receives and gives it to the people. He was a teacher of the word of God. So God himself, like we have 
shared it before, we say you'll share it again. Because actually it's so difficult these days. I mean, what are we up to? There's so many things that are said. There's so many things that are done by people. But here we're saying God himself was the giver of the word, of the word, was the giver of the message, message concerning the present, message concerning the future, message concerning the uncertainty in which people were. And so they, God himself was the speaker, was the conveyor of the message, was the giver of the message, and then the conveyor, the speaker, the utterer of the word was this person that he had chosen, he himself. So sometimes God would use the word through this person to speak to the people. And sometimes God would use a miracle, performing some miracles through them, using miracles through them. For instance, friends, you read about Moses. Moses, when God chose him to go to Egypt before Pharaoh, there were miracles, several, several miracles that God used Moses to perform before King Pharaoh, before the Pharaoh of Egypt. Moses, read about him. He was a man used of God. Read about Elijah. I know this that we've talked about in our episodes. Read about Elisha. Actually, people are known as the miracle prophet because he performed several, several, several miracles before his people. So what the prophet conveyed, either word spoken, either miracle or miracle performed, he was only conveying what God has sent him to do. God himself choosing and relaying this to the hearers or the lookers because something that can be performed, the lookers. Something that can be heard, the hearers. So God himself using them. So we are seeing these words interchangeably used. The seer, the one holding the vision. And we talk about the vision of God. And God speaks to these people in, um, in Numbers 12. Even when they were on their way going, God speaks and says that actually he will choose. And someone sees a vision, someone sees a dream and speaks it. And rightly so when God has really chosen. So a prophet, friends, God is spokesman. God is spokesperson. He spoke in the name of God. I've already referred to Moses. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, God sends Moses to go to Pharaoh in Egypt. And he speaks to him to go. And he says, the Lord said to Moses, Exodus 7. See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. Remember, now these two are moving together. You shall speak all that I command. This is important. All that I command to you, and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land. Now here there is something that actually God is finding. God is sending. Moses is not going to speak his own. And God is putting him a level above. Praise the Lord. And he uses his brother Aaron to be his interpreter. Interpreter, the one who is delivers the message, a prophet. Now this gives us a real meaning that actually you don't speak that which is yours, but you depend on the source and the source is God himself. And he become a mouthpiece. And that's another word. So a prophet is a mouth by which God speaks to men and to women. And so, the reason why when we dive into God's word deeper and far into the Bible written, or even that which is, of course, actually we have now written word, and then we have the, the ones that people use, uh, the, the audio that has been read. Now you listen, you discover that the prophets that God actually used. Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, when God calls him, when God calls him, he says, Behold, I put my word in your mouth. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, I put my word into your mouth. So that when you go, you don't speak that which is yours. You speak what God is speaking. God is speaking into 
the situation and to the people. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 16. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 16. The Bible says, I have put. Now that one, let's, let's read there. Isaiah 51 verse, Isaiah 51 verse 16. This is what the Bible says. 51 16. And the Bible says that, and I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand establishing the heavens and laying the foundations of the earth and saying to Zion, you are my people. The, the Lord is word into a prophet's mouth. So he becomes a mouthpiece. And so what the prophet says, dear friends, is not his, but of God. Now you draw a distinction of what happened then and what is happening now in our society today. Now, the Bible still says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 22, 21, 22, there. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. I have written in my book and says, no prophecy, no prophecy comes from one's own interpretation. No prophecy. No prophecy was produced by the will of man. And so Second Peter is written in the New Testament Bible, and he also says this, that actually should not come from our own interpretation, not from our own, not to be produced by us, but the, but the, the originator of the word is God himself. So friends, this is actually very, very important, that actually the prophets that spoke, the, prophet, the people that God used as prophets during that time, These words were written for us to think through and apply in our own lives. And so actually we can put ourselves there and God uses us. We commit ourselves to the will of God. So the prophets were communicators of God's mind and God's will to men. Of course, God had already mentioned to the people of Israel when they were on their way. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18, he was promising them that actually, I will raise up a prophet like Moses uh, who will, and I will put my word in his mouth. And so they were the receivers and the revealers of God's will, of God's word. They received, receiving God's word and revealing it to the people. So why did these prophets, prophecies come? The prophecies came because they were there to reveal God's intention for the people. If there was something that was wrong, they were meant speaking God's mind that I'm going to destroy you. And so they were there to correct the moral and religious truths connected with the God's character. That align yourself to God's character. So they were there to correct speaking God's mind into the situation. That this is what God is saying. This is what God wants. And so, anyone speaking for God, called a prophet, should speak God's mind into a situation that is prevailing at that time and should be correctly so. Because actually God's word specifies the same, putting God's word into the mouth. And so, when we read the Bible, this God's word, we discover lots spoken, written about the prophets, even the 70 elders in Numbers chapter 11 were prophesying, they were speaking God's word. Asaph and Jeduthun in the second Chronicles 25, they were prophesying and speaking God's word through music. Speaking, speaking, singing, and sp singing God's prophecies. Miriam and Deborah are referred to as prophetesses. And of course, someone can rise up with the question, but were they women also? Yes, Miriam was was a prophetess, and Deborah was. So Miriam, we read about her in Exodus chapter 15, verse 20. Miriam, the prophetess, and the Deborah in Judges chapter 4. We've talked about her already in episodes, was a prophetess. So the name prophet referred to anyone speaking the messages from God, speaking God's own. The reason why God positioned them variously in Israel God positioned them various in Israel and from the north we talked about we have talked about the kingdoms there 
the north, we have prophets that God positioned there, and in the south, God positioned them to speak God's word. Now, but there were those who could come and, as masqueraders, and masqueraders, counterfeit. And even during our time, we suffer this just like Israel was. Now, in Hebrew, we have masqueraders called false prophets. And these ones are given a name, Kosem in Hebrew. And they are referred to as diviners. They are referred to as soothsayers. So anyone practicing divination, diviners, anyone practicing, you know, they are called soothsayers. Of course, actually, they, are, they also had a position in the, in the society, among the Hebrews, even in Africa. These are common here, soothsayers and diviners, the, the respectable men also, but speaking into people's situation. But here they are talked about as uh, falsehoods in the Bible. Now, a false prophet will claim to speak for God when they are not. A false prophet in falsehood, someone who claims to be when he is not. And I just want to give Jesus' his own example. Jesus, our Lord, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 20, Jesus was referring to the soothsayers, to the diviners, to the false people that speak, yet claiming, claiming, not claiming, yet not sent. And so Jesus warns in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, and he says that beware of false prophets because he knows that they are there. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by the fruits. Now, falsehood, you recognize by the fruits. Even the true prophets, you recognize by the fruit that comes out of them. Are grapes gathered from thorny bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. Now, Jesus continues in verse 18 and says, A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruit. Now, this is the challenge that actually uh, Jesus is seeing and is saying, recognize. And therefore, friends, you need the spirit of God of discernment. The spirit of discernment to be able to tell. And until you dive deeper into God's word to read about what the prophet, the true prophet should be and what a prophet, a true prophet is. You'll follow anyone. You'll go with anyone. Even a soothsayer, you'll say this is a prophet of God. Even a diviner. And these days we have several, many who go this way. And so Jesus warns, beware. In Luke chapter 6, verse 26, says, Woe to you. He speaks also warning. Apostle Peter, in his writing, warns. Second Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, but false prophets also arose, will arise, and so beware. And so Apostle John also warns. In Revelation, chapter 19, talks about the beast, the deceiver. And so a false prophet will come deceiving. And Jesus says they come putting on like sheep skin. I mean, putting on sheep skin purportedly to be being like that they are sheep when actually they are not. So see what the Bible says um, in Isaiah chapter, in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 31, that the prophets, the prophecy, prophesy falsely. And my people love them. My people follow them. People speaking their own words, speaking falsehoods. And people, God's people, listen and follow them. 
They speak illusions. Illusions. False prophets speak illusions, but not the truth. They speak pleasure and fantasy, but not the truth from God. Now, they only want to speak what people want to hear, but they hate correction. So, friends, they also, the Bible also says that they teach what people want to hear, that the ears of the people itch to hear those nicenesses, those nice things that they want to speak, but they are not truth from God. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. So, friends, we need to get to the word of God. The prophets who spoke and came true, and the prophets who align themselves, the people that God sends to speak and correct societal ills, correct situations, speaking God's mind into the situation. And so may God help us that as Jesus warns us, like we've just been reading, that beware of falsehoods. Now in our generation, falsehood is up and about everywhere people speaking people doing things but are they aligning themselves to the will of god somewhere was a seer god was a seer nothing was a prophet and they spoke and they rebuked evil in society now may god raise up men and women who will speak the truth who will be God's representatives, who will be God's spokespersons in the society that we are living. Because we are here to correct, we are here to rebuke, we are here to heal where there is trouble. And may God continue speaking and this portion of scripture that I've given, that you keep reading them and align yourself to the will of God, that you'll be able to do what that which God wants and please him. And so that actually his glory is revealed in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.